Hi guys, welcome back to Cinematic Mike Review. Today I'm doing a review on John Watts' Spider-Man No Way Home, the most anticipated film of the year. It was one I was looking forward to, not big time, big time, but I was looking forward to it. And you, sh like all of you guys, you guys probably should know why I was looking forward to it, just because of what was revealed in the trailer and all that, and the things that we were hearing about these villains of the other installments were coming back, the ones from the Tobey Maguire um, trilogy, the one from um, Andrew Garfield's um, Spider-Man movies. We're going to come in here and join um, Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man. And I couldn't wait to see it because, man, I grew up with the Sam Raimi's um, Spider-Man films. And then I remember following um, Andrew Garfield's uh, Mark, Webb, Mark Webb's films, too. I remember when Mark Webb uh, brought out The Amazing Spider-Man. I do have to say, you know, I do have my issues with the MCU, as you probably some of you may know. I I was I was a fan of it um still a little bit but um I was I liked when it started off with Iron Man and all that but then it got to a point where they started sticking to the same thing which is I think something that's known for some people uh, and it's something that already bothers me and I think I started realizing that by the time Thor Ragnarok came out or around there somewhere and so I started kind of throwing me off and I remember making this like I don't know what you, what you would call it, this oath that, you know what, after Endgame, I'm done because I'm just done with it. I was already getting tired of it, kind of a little bit going towards. I just felt like I put in all this work watching all the movies that I had to go see Endgame and all that to finish it all off. And after that, I don't know if I saw I didn't like, um, what was it? Uh, I didn't like what they did with the Black Widow movie. I didn't like Shang-Chi. I, I, really, I already expected what they were going to. I already knew. I already expected what uh they did with the shang chi so i was like oh okay yeah it's basically the same thing um so that's why i didn't enjoy it i mean it's a good movie it's not a bad movie but um the one i didn't like was what they did with black widow but shang chi's all right a decent film but it's it was just something i already knew what it was going to be like where i could be like oh it's just uh another marvel movie same thing here um i think i could just say yeah it's another marvel movie that's it um but uh yeah i had to see this one because you know as I said, I'm a fan of those uh, villains from the previous installments, and I just I had to go see this. And I think that's what they were doing it for is people who are fans of this, uh, of Spider-Man fans and all that, and people who had seen the other ones. This film actually picks off where the previous one um, left off, I think Spider-Man Far From Home. And it picks off where Mysterio actually revealed Spider-Man's identity as Peter Parker. So Peter is actually struggling because everyone knows who he is, and it causes some some issues in his life you know with school um affecting his friends and all and then you know he he can't handle it so he ends up thinking about someone and he asks dr strange knowing that dr dr strange can do magic and all that he asks him hey can you help uh just change it a bit change let maybe change the world make me help him put a spell to let them you know erase that they know that i am peter parker and so when he's about to do it Peter Parker realizes like, oh, oh no, I'm like some other people that I care about that I already know who I am are not going to know. So he starts having some concerns. And as he's doing this, he's causing some damage with the spell. Since that spell goes wrong, it ends up opening portals to other universes, which is how the villains from the previous installments end up coming in. Like Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman. The first villain that we get introduced to from the previous films is actually Doc Ock, Alfred Molina's Doc Ock. And he gives a great performance. He has, still has that touch the way he did it in Spider-Man 2, which is amazing on the bridge scene. It's just great seeing him back. One thing that did disappoint me a little bit is the CGI um, arms. I didn't really like that. Uh, I felt like something was missing from him. And I think I noticed it was the CGI arms, which I, there was already talked about that he wouldn't have the uh, puppet arms that Sam Raimi had him have. And so I think the CGI just bothered me a little bit. Um, but just his performance, the way he sounds and everything, he, he's great. He sounds like um, Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man 2. He actually sounds like um, the way he did um, in that film. And then we do uh, get Green Goblin for, us for like a little bit. He appears on the bridge too, but then it's cut away. But then uh, not that long after, we get to see Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn, kind of trying to escape the Goblin and trying to find some help and confuse on where he's at and what's going on. And Willem Dafoe still gives a great performance as Norman Osborn being someone that's kind of held prisoner to the Goblin. We find out that Doctor Strange already has Dr. Kurt Connors, the lizard, trapped inside one of his cells. And then Spider-Man eventually ends up finding Jamie Foxx's Electro. 
and Sandman from Spider-Man 3, Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, Jamie Foxx gives a total different performance from the one that he gave in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I guess was kind of a little bit iffy with me. I know, I know why they might have done it, but it it just felt kind of out of... It didn't feel like really continu con con continuous like the way it should have been. Even though, yes, I did have my issues with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I was like, that was already set up. So, but yeah, I already knew that because since I saw the trailer and all the talk that, you know, he's not going to be blue and all that. He's going to have a different total look. But his performance was way total different from um the one in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There's a scene where all these villains are together in like one room. And just seeing all these actors from all the films that I saw of Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, 3, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 all together in like one room it just gave me goosebumps and it made me kind of nervous i don't know why but it made me kind of it gave me this like scared uh feeling but at the same time there's like this joy like inside of me that it's like damn this is just amazing because these actors that played these villains of the movies that i saw throughout this whole time of the spider-man are all together in one room and that that was a nice touch to it these villains and parker learned that they all died from like you know the previous movies uh they all died and so Tom Holland, um, uh, Peter Parker, actually thinking about this, actually has f feels for them. And instead of um, having them play out that whole thing that happened in the other films, he decides that he wants to help them against Doctor Strange's um, wishes. Doctor Strange isn't a fan of this and him and Spider-Man end up getting into a showdown, which is really amazing. You end up going again into the mirror dimension, which is something we saw in uh, Doctor Strange, which was another amazing um scene from that film of this whole world of the mirror dimension I, I i thought it was great and i think it's perfect in this scene too just that little showdown with spider-man against dr strange is a bit of fun as i said growing up knowing what the mcu is known for now um with their films uh which like the last previous ones that have been in the theaters that have come out already on dvd yeah I, you already have a feeling you know what you're gonna get when you go and watch an mcu film and I don't think it's going to be anything different. I think it's still going to have the same thing. You know, they're going to put in these touches with these characters the same as they did with the other ones. And as I was getting closer to the film, I was getting worried because I was like, oh, no, I was like thinking about how the MCU is and all that. I'm like, I don't want them to take away from these villains of what I thought about them from the other films. You know, I don't want them to end up making them too comedic. The scene on the bridge, the... Uh, Doc Ock, Alfred Molina, uh, the introduction back again to Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn and the Goblin. The beginning when they appear, it's great. Um, but after that, it goes into the MCU territory where it's just, it has to be a comedy, like family comedy now. And that's the thing that bothers me about the MCU a lot. And it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. I can't say much about Jamie Foxx's character because he's a total different person here. But just thinking about how, like, the way the other films were a bit more kind of serious in these with these characters, they just seem like they drift off into the comedic route than they were in the, than the way their characters actually were from the other films. So I wish there was a consistency with the, the tone of the films with this one, but it seems like they really have to change it because it's an MCU film. When the whole rumors were going on that the villains were going to appear from the other films like Doc Ock and all that, I thought it was just going to be Doc Ock, Green Goblin, and Electro that were going to be in it. It wasn't until I saw the trailer, the one that we all saw, where I, was, I did a reaction, I think, to it, and I saw the lizard, and I was like, oh my god, he's back. And to me, it was exciting, you know? Uh, I'm not sure for most of you, because some people maybe aren't fans of the Andrew Garfield one, but I was a fan of that one. I was really disappointed when the second one came out, because I knew it was going to end up being rebooted um with the failure that with everything that i saw on there i already knew it was going to be rebooted uh but I, I remember going to the theater to go watch the the first one the amazing spider-man and i remember the how the theater was packed and there was just like the spider-man fans were there today there i remember that day which is spider-man fans how i went with my um sister my my sister-in-law i think my um my brother and all that um we went there and I just remember how fun it was to watch it and how I, I was thinking about, wow, it's, yeah, I wonder how they're going to do it. And they did great. And I, I liked it. I liked The Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, just the lizard rise up on right there. It was just amazing. The thing is, when I even when I saw this, it seemed like people didn't really care much for his character as much as I do. You know, I care about his character as much as I do about um Doc Ock and um, Green Goblin. 
I can't say much for Electro. But I do love Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is great. But um, it wasn't as epic as the other ones were. But yeah, Jamie Foxx had a big uh, role in this one because, you know, he's Jamie Foxx. He has to. <laughs> but it seemed like the lizard was just downplayed a bit. Like he was just like there just to kind of be there and not really do much. And I wish they would have gave him a moment to shine. I was a bit disappointed, too, at the beginning when we his reveal, when he starts talking. At first, I thought he wasn't going to talk at all. I'm like, oh, they just have him there as the the lizard. I don't know if he's going to talk. But then he ends up talking and his voice didn't sound the same as Rise F on from the Amazing Spider-Man. And I was a bit disappointed. I was like, oh, man, did you guys really have to cast another voice? I was like, I'd rather him not talk. But then as it goes on, I end up hearing it. And I'm like, no, I think that is him. And later on, I found out that it was Rise of Fawn that reprised this role as the lizard. But I just wish he had a bigger part in it, too. Uh, just as equal to um, Doc Ock, Goblin, and Electro in it, too. And Sandman is in there, too. The same um, actor. I forgot his name. Um uh I'm trying to remember it's it's on my head but i can't remember exactly his name but yeah he's there too and just seeing him reminds me of the time that i saw spider-man 3 in the theater too i remember that time when it had been like a a little gap from spider-man 2 because i think spider-man 2 came right after spider-man 1 but then there was a gap and then i remember spider-man 3 and i remember i remember exactly what theater i went to to go watch that one and i i went with one of my brothers i think that day and yeah it's just it's just seeing him it brought those memories and all that so as this film was going into that mcu comedy thingy that i've been talking about i was getting a little bit disappointed in there um but you know in spider-man spider-man has to be funny in a way i just feel like there still should be good writing into like the film um i know it's spider-man and all that but there's some things that i feel like mcu kind of takes away from something that they have that could be really good great uh but it takes it there's a shift in the tone and this is all because of the goblin which is great which is where i was like damn and it's it's a great scene too and i love this this tone this shift i love it when it plays out and i love the directing in this scene and this whole um section of the movie i love the directing in it i love the performance in it i there's a scene with freaking tom holland and uh willem dafoe actually fighting and it was just an amazing scene to see and Tom Holland's performance is great. I'm not going to lie. I've been a fan of his since the first one. You know, he's been a great actor since the moment that I saw him in that scene as Spider-Man, Peter Parker, in that scene where the vulture drops a whole roof on top of him, you know, this, um, since um, Far From Home, where he's really like, you know, where he's finally had it with Mysterio's betrayal and he looks him in the eye or something and he says something where he's like, you, you, you can't trick me anymore. And... I'm not going to lie in this film, this film actually made me choke, couldn't, made me not, I couldn't hold being choked up in some part of this film. I couldn't hold being choked up. It also shows you just how crazy the character of the Goblin is and how, how he's one of Spider-Man's greatest villains. After the switch in tone, I was saying, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, cool, sweet. Let's see. There's more, it turned into a more dramatic tone. I'm like, let's see where they go with this. And then with certain things that happen, it continues on, even with things that go on in this film later on, the whole thing happens to turn out just be joke after joke after joke, which kind of takes you away from the seriousness of the things that happen in the film, which is something I felt again with the last Marvel film that I saw, which was uh, Shang-Chi. Um, so those are the things that i say about the i was like oh great so we're going back here again i just wish there was like a balance uh, i don't know a proper balance with the humor and the drama of the mcu but sometimes i feel like the humor is more than the drama for some reason and that's something that it just gets to me all the time which is why i kind of want to be done with the marvel movies i will admit though the movie is fun if you're a fan of spider of the spider-man films if you're a fan of the villains from the movies that they came from this is a fun film but to me i don't know if it was a great story with what they had going on here i think it had potential for a greater story uh but it turned out to be just what i expected which is just a a fan service film we do have to give it up to Tom Holland facing off against these actors who actually portrayed the villains from the movies that he probably saw as a kid. And it's just just thinking about it when you're watching the film, you're like, damn, that's Tom Holland. And he probably freaking saw these movies as a kid because he's still young. And now he's facing he's there in the Spider-Man costume facing off against these people from the Spider-Man films that he saw. So I thought that was great. 
I can't say this is a great or the greatest Spider-Man film because I think it just works because for me, because of the nostalgia, it's just that I like it because of the villains. That's it. There wasn't any big story that I could be like, damn, I really like the story of uh, No Way Home. It was a great story. No, it was mostly the thing that I liked about it that I walked out satisfied is just because I saw Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe, Jamie Foxx, uh, not Raise It Found is uh, all the way, but um, The Lizard. It's because I saw these characters from the other films, from the, the ones that I saw all here. And, you know, it just filled up everything, you know. It was basically like a treat for the fans for Christmas. That way, that's all it seemed like it was. As I said before, I wanted to kind of quit the Marvel movies, but I couldn't resist this one. But this one also just goes back to remind me of why I want to leave the Marvel uh, films. I might have not even watched this third one if it wasn't for the things that were shown in the trailer, the things that we already knew were that was coming, the villains and all that. I don't know, maybe the next film that might get my attention from the MCU, I think is Blade probably. I didn't even watch The Eternals because I didn't want to watch that one because it didn't, I didn't want to watch Shang-Chi. I didn't want to watch Eternals. Black Widow was bad. But Blade kind of is a little bit getting my attention because Mahershala Ali and it's Blade. But who knows? I would buy it only for these reasons because you know, it's just like a treat, I guess. Um, so that's the only reason I would buy this film, not because it's uh, something I need to have in my collection. I feel like it's a way where I could just like put it out of my collection. It's not a bad movie. It's not like it has to be out of my collection because it's freaking the worst Spider-Man film. <laughs> no, it's, it's a decent movie. It's fun. Uh, but I would have it just because of the satisfaction that it has for a Spider-Man fan and all that. With that being said, in a way, I guess, um, I can say... I see it more like a standalone film because I guess I want to see it like a standalone film because it did do what I, I thought it was going to do, which was going to take away from the characters of the villains from the previous films. And I'd rather keep those right there as the way I had them as, as I was growing up watching the Spider-Man films. And I would like to see this as, I guess, try to take it like a standalone and not really a continuation of those and just leave those, let those be what they are and just see this as just the one to the side. That's because I feel it takes away from what I enjoyed of these characters from the previous installments, that'd be why. That's all I have to say for Spider-Man No Way Home. I do recommend it, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan, especially if you saw the Sam Raimi trilogy, you saw the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, you're a fan of these villains, uh, these actors. Um, so I do recommend that you go watch it. It's, it's, it's fun and it's not bad. I don't think you'll have a bad time in it you know you'll laugh and you'll see some things that are cool and all that that's my review for spider-man no way home it's a fun movie i do recommend it if you enjoyed my video please hit that like button and subscribe and as always thank you for watching